And the Federal Reserve, of course, has begun raising interest rates. They will start unwinding the $4.5 trillion balance sheet later this year. Joining me right now to talk more about the global economy is former Federal Reserve Chairman Alan Greenspan. Dr. Greenspan, it's always a pleasure to see you. Welcome back. Thank you very much, Maria. Good so, to see you. So yesterday we had a GDP number out, Dr. Greenspan, as you know. It was up 1.4%. How do you think we can break out of this sort of stall that we're seeing in terms of economic growth? It's going to be very difficult. Mm. Uh, first, let me just say that uh, Obamacare is clearly underfunded, but so is every social benefit program that becomes underfunded. When are we going to get one that has got more money than it needs? But this is a very important issue because lurking in background is a very much more difficult problem than even Obamacare. And this is essentially the fact that for the past 50 years, uh, entitlements have been growing inexorably, partly from the side of the uh, Republicans, I should say mainly from Republicans, and to a lesser extent from the Democrats. But the problem is that that number is crowding out dollar for dollar gross domestic savings. And gross domestic savings is the key to gross domestic investment, and gross domestic investment leads to productivity. What our problem is and what the problem across the developing world has been for the last eight or nine years is essentially that uh, we have a very slow rate of productivity. The reason we're having a problem now in funding de deficits and funding all sorts of new entitlements is that our level of GDP and income, for example, with the lower GDPs that we've been having, we've, ha we've been having a subnormal rise in payroll tax receipts. This is one of the key problems which you're going to confront in the future. Yeah, which is why we're watching these tax receipts real closely because that's the real indicator of what's going on. I mean, there's a lot of predictions out there that, oh, things are getting better. The unemployment rate of 4.6%, 4.7%, good number. And yet when you look at actual tax receipts and the income that Americans are taking in, that is a real indicator of what's to come because if they're not making income and seeing wage increases, they're not going to filter that back into the economy. That's absolutely right. Uh, now, we will be getting a 3% GDP figure for the second quarter, but that's a questionable number because economists have been struggling with the seasonal adjustment factors between the first and the second quarter in the GDP. And in any event, it is extremely unlikely, given what's been happening to capital investment and hence productivity, to get at a 3% real rate of growth in the distant future. Yeah, you mentioned I, a lot of important things here, Dr. Greenspan, and you're saying the capital investment. That's really where I wanted to focus because that's where the recession has been, right? In the last several years, businesses unwilling to put new money to work in terms of CapEx put new money to work in terms of jobs, are we still seeing that tightness in, in terms of the business community? Well, remember that it's not been, uh, it's not that much of a problem in short-term equipment. I mean, uh, software and various other types of very uh, two or three year depreciated capital assets has not been a problem. It's the long-lived assets, the buildings, the structures, and especially those which are more than 20 years of the potential life expectancy of more than 20 years. What that is, is there is an extremely heavy rate of discounting in the, for the distant future, and that has warped our capital investment structures in such a manner that we're having difficulty creating productivity, which can give us anywhere near 3% long-term rate of growth. Yeah, and you've been watching productivity for as long as I know you. Let me, let me ask you this, Dr. Greenspan. We know that the Fed has begun raising interest rates. We've been sitting on free money for so long now. Are they going to raise rates and smash what has been the, the, a, a fractional sort of recovery in the economy? I mean, do you worry that higher interest rates are basically going to stop any recovery that has just begun to gain traction? Uh, leaving the Fed aside, but let me talk in terms of where the market pressures are. Okay. Uh, I don't forecast what the Fed is doing. Right, of course. They never did when I was in office. I don't want to, I don't want to second guess them. 
but there are pressures obviously emerging uh, for uh, long-term debt uh, to start moving up. It's an extraordinarily low level. Uh, and uh, as the um, inflationary pressures, which now seem to be building, we have just been through a long period of stagnation. We're moving now towards what we used to call stagflation, in which the short-term outlook begins to look sort of a slightly buoyant because the inflation actually moves profitability. And you get a sense that maybe things are over, but that's going to be a false dawn. Uh, uh, we've been through this period before of stagflation back in the 1970s, and it's going to be very tough to get our way beyond it. So do you think we are going to see stagflation then? I think we're in the process of seeing it now. I see. In other words, what I think is happening is the wage rates are beginning to move. Uh, unit labor costs are on the move. Uh, it is uh, essentially uh, the, the criteria of what you're looking for for inflation to start to move. But the stagnation is really still there. It will ease some, but the presumption that we're going to come b bouncing back I think is utterly unrealistic. So 